Um, this is my reflective piece on the um, water audit um, part of our water portfolio project. Um, I, what I, when doing the project, I learned a lot about how Americans um, use their water compared to like the rest of the world and our daily averages. And it's much higher than the rest of the world. I mean, that's a given, right? Um, specifically Austin though, we're pretty, we're lower than the rest of the US. And in my household, I'm on par with the daily usage of um, water in Austin. But when we're talking about um, our yearly usage, I think our family secedes the, uh, the yearly usage in Austin. Um, mainly because of like dishwashing and clothes washing that tends to take a lot but um, I've learned not to take that as granted and try to cut down on my water usage um, a lot actually it's like mainly the showers and the, and the toilet and the faucet that uh, seem to take up most of the um, most of the, uh, the water I use per day um, so cutting down on shower time and um uh like just general general um general like needs that i have every day without reducing the personal hygiene aspect of the water is is what i did and i think the water audit relates to um the investigate the world uh pillar of ags um because yes it's it's researchable uh, the water audit, how much we use. Yes, I researched that. Um, and its significance to like a global community. Well, obviously, we are in a water crisis. I mean, Cape Town, uh, South Africa, they have to get water shipped into them because they're out of water. And many of the Middle Eastern countries won't have water in a couple of years. And we sit here in America with our water just you know sitting sitting pretty fine um and at the moment it's not a pressing matter but it will be and the water audit holds a significance to global communities um because the um the more and more water we use is going to affect the rest of the people everybody is equal but some people aren't as privileged or aren't as lucky to be born where they are. Well, here in the U.S. with our water, it's fine. But other countries won't have water in a couple of years from now. And that's, that's a really significant matter. And, and um, the water audit poses that significance to global community because we got to cut down on the amount of water we use. This is like a wake-up call for how much water we use. Um, moving on to the uh, walk for water reflection, um, what I learned from that, I learned a lot from that. Um, I learned that the average person in Burundi has to walk three miles in order to get their water for their family. And you know, they might have to do that multiple times a day before school. It's not an option. It's not like, oh, I'll do that later. It's like, you gotta get up and get the water for your family for survival and then you can go to school. School is a privilege for them in Burundi, not, not, a, not mandatory like it is in the US. We hold our education to a high price. Um, also, I learned, I learned how privileged we are in the US to have running water, you know, not just one place in the house, but it could be multiple, you know, in our bathrooms, our kitchens. We get water everywhere and we have an abundance of it and we use too much of it. It only takes $30 to supply a family or a community with water in Burundi and that's something communal. It's not even in their own homes. They do not have running water in their own homes. We are privileged. Everybody is equal as I've said, but we have just been born into a more privileged area. Um, this relates to the take action uh, pillar of AGS because we we took action. We raised money, we 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 simulated it. Um, we took action in in helping other countries in need of water. We actually succeeded our goal 
and how much money we needed to raise to uh, supply multiple communities with water, um, which I thought was great. You know, this is the um, this is the shirt for the for the Walk for Water. So you're sporting the Gazelle Foundation, which is the foundation who helped um, you know help this crisis. Um, so the take action performance is, is, is acts individually or collaboratively to execute a plan that is culturally appropriate. So the walk for water was culturally culturally appropriate because we we helped we helped a different culture and in turn maybe we modified our own. Maybe we realized that we were using too much water and um, that we needed to cut down on it. It was a wake up call for I think a lot of us, not only me, to really take a look at what we have and how we can conserve that or how we can help others with what we have. Um, so that was the, um, that was the walk for water. Um, and I think that did merit some action. So moving on to the freshman position paper. Um, basically, it was a mock model UN for the freshmen to introduce them to global issues because, you know, here at AGS, that's what we're all about, right? So, we were assigned a topic, which we had to debate. I, you've most likely read already. Um, anyways, we were, uh, I was ocean acidification, and my country was the USA. So, how did ocean acidification affect us, affect others, what we're doing to stop it, you know, etc. Um, and we, I, I've learned that a lot, like, the USA, of course, it has it, it has it, it had, it has it really easy. Um, and a lot of the other, the other countries don't like, um, a lot of those island nations, their tourism industry, their fishing industry, it all is reliable. They, are, they all rely on the ocean. And with ocean acidification and killing the wildlife, what are they going to do in a couple of years when that's in, in, in full force, serious swing? Um, that's going to kill their economies, and a lot of those island nations won't be able to survive. You know, us in America, we, got, we have a lot of, of people in our, our shipping and fishing industries and our aquacultures are being affected by the ocean acidification. So um, I learned that um, we got to, we take our earth for granted. You know, a lot of this, a lot of what I learned is what we take for granted. And we take our earth for, for granted. And... Um, if we keep trashing our earth by raising the pH levels in the ocean and to a point where we um, put a ecosystem. Anyways, uh, back to what I was saying. I, uh, I got interrupted there for a second. Um, if we keep raising the pH levels to put a point where an ecosystem or a population becomes extinct because of what we have done, we have single-handedly, you know, essentially just mass murdered uh, a species. Um, if we do that, we're seriously putting our well-being at stake. Not only our economy, but us as human beings. Um, so the freshman position paper relates to the AGS pillar of communicate ideas because we were put in a room where we had to solve an epi epidemic and we communicated our ideas on how to solve it, whether it be research or capping CO2 emissions to stop pH levels. It was something we've done. We communicated ideas, we collaborated, we created a um, paper that was our idea on how to solve our crisis. Um, uh, yeah, so that's what we did for the uh, freshman position paper. Moving on to our world geography water activity, we had to research the Ganges River um, and the different intricacies that that holds. Um, I learned a lot from that, actually. I learned that, yes, the India population is destroying that river. Yes, it's highly toxic. Yes, many of the species that once lived there do not longer ex do no longer exist like the, uh, the the Ganges dolphin I think that's what it's called um, it may be different from that but um, 
it it no longer exists. It was taken out by the toxic levels in the Ganges River. But there's there's another aspect to that. It's not just what humans are doing to destroy their environment, but the Ganges holds a cultural and religious um, like significance to it. So a lot of not a lot, just like all of the Hindus um, living in in India, um, they worship that river because it represents the goddess of Ganga. So it 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 within itself is like a representation of a god to them. So it holds serious um, cultural and religious um, power. Um, it's like a I've learned that the humans, even if they are destroying what they what they love, they're still going to do it. So they love it so much that they're destroying it, but they're not going to stop because they love what they're doing, and it it's it holds a lot of significance to them. It's it's more cultural than environmental. So um, that's what I learned for the Ganges. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, you have a great, important river for India on this hand that's being destroyed by its inhabitants. But then you have this beautiful cultural um, appreciation of, of the environment. So they appreciate the environment, but in turn are killing it. And they're not going to stop because it is written into their religion. It is religious practices it is what they believe in so um they're gonna continue they're gonna continue doing that um and not gonna stop so this um this closely relates to recognized perspectives um because we looked at the ganges from all sides right we could looked at like the environmentalist view the cultural aspect and what it does for the population so we recognized that they're killing the river but we also recognized that it holds great significance to the people so there's multiple sides to the argument there's no there's no way of playing the devil's advocate because all sides are valid and all sides are well thought out there's no right or wrong Someone could say, you're killing your river. Um, why are you doing that? You need to stop. And the follower of that religion could just say, it's what I do. It's a practice. I need to be doing that. It's, it's what I believe in. And in the end, you can't stop the power of belief. Because no matter what you do to destroy what you love, Ultimately, what you believe in is going to rival every other. Um, so that's that's what I that's what I believe in. Um, that's what that's what I think about all of the uh, the water issues that are going around in the world. That's that's how I reflect. This is what I've learned. This is how it relates to to the um, to the pillars. Uh, thank you very much. Um, for your time and uh, watching this video.